overall, I feel like for me being my first time going through this long season. So for me to hit my walls where I did and, and came back from it, um, I didn't try to get too down on myself because I know I could play at this level, but it was tough going, you know, later in the season. But Monte, uh, mission accomplished. You know, I, I met with him. I said, your job is to run your team. Uh, your job is to play with pace. And your goal should be to be the best point guard out there. Now, I didn't watch all 30 point guards, but when you average 18 points, six assists, one turnover, shoot 35 plus from three and close to 50 from the field, I'd say that you've done a pretty good job of um, not only understanding what was asked of you, but taking taking it by the horns and running with it. Yeah, I got a training camp with no experience. The only experience I got is up here in the G League. Big as hell. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, 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 like, that's all we do. Talk shit. Flag ball. She's a point guard with the Denver Nuggets. Monte. Big game take. Different this time. Uh, Small team, big dreams, you know what I'm saying? He's living life right now. My son, my soul for an artist's love with them giant raptors. My chef cooking that steak and lobster on giant platters. Forsaking all I can for the spat the master. Path to disaster and slave by the master. I'm hearing they laughter, uh. Drunk off my own grapes, yes, I'm blasting pockets and spatter. Without peace, what does it matter, man? They say I played in three games. But me playing in the game is like really getting minutes and shit, at least like 15, 20. So they they had me, they, they put me down as a rookie, which I played in month in one game. I played 22 minutes against the Houston Rockets my first year. And I don't even like it to my own horn, but I feel like me, I, did, I didn't get enough respect, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that don't even, don't, don't even happen, you know what I'm saying? But we gonna double back on it. I got my team here, only motherfucker I'm missing is my mama. We straight. I'm back with Lock and Wiley, joined now by Denver Nuggets point guard, Monte Morris. All right, Monte, I'm going to start you off with a relative, maybe an easy question. Yeah. Frustration <clears throat> or motivation when you hear people say the Denver Nuggets, fifth seed in the West? Uh -huh. Does that frustrate you or does that motivate you? Uh, it's motivation. I mean, last year, our goal was going to the training camp was to be a playoff team. You know, we made the playoffs now, so... Going forward, customer always preached to us. Let's go forward. You know, so we know we got everybody back. And uh, Grant from OKC, I think that'll be a huge contribute to what we're trying to do in Denver and uh, take that next step for us. So it's definitely motivation. It's always been motivation. We got a lot of underrated guys, and people didn't know much about us until we got in the playoffs and they really seen, you know, how good we were. So it's, it's motivation for sure. Well, I know you're a fan of the game. You've been mm -hmm. following uh, this free agency period. Yeah. Uh, there's teams that build through a young core, and there's teams that go out there and just spend their money and buy teams. Uh, the importance of doing one over the other. Yeah, so, I mean, some teams, you know, are trying to start over and start with younger guys, younger core, but there's some teams out there that's trying to win right now. And, um, you know, like in L.A., they got some superstars over there. Mm -hmm. It's been a crazy offseason. You know, mm -hmm. Westbrook going with Harden. The West is loaded, so... Uh, you know, it's just all about how you feel and what your team needs and how you see the future. Yeah, so talk about L.A. We're right yeah. here. Uh, there's the Lakers, obviously Anthony Davis, LeBron, but the Clippers, yeah. uh, we know what they did with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Which of those teams do you see looking better in terms of the roster so far? Man, it's hard to say. I mean, it ain't that um, hard. Come on. No, <laughs> to me, it's hard to say because, you know, you can have – a lot of all-stars, you know, at the end of the day, it's one basketball, and it's all about how your team click and yeah. team unity, team chemistry, locker room, things and like that. So, But you're playing 2K right now. Yeah. Which team you going to play with? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Come on. That's how you get it out to Okay. You. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. I'm uh, probably the Clippers. I know. <laughs> we can move on. That's all for I sure. need to hear. Yeah, yeah, sure. Tell me this. What are those of us that are caught up in the stars, mm -hmm. the teams with the two superstars, what are we sleeping on or missing about the Denver Nuggets mm -hmm. and the way... Do you guys feel like you have superstars that mm. maybe we're not considering? Yeah. Or do you like y'all's more team approach? Man, we have, so we got Nikola Jokic, I feel like don't get enough mm. credit. I mean, if you watch our games, it's a triple-double every single night. He can have an off night and still finish with 20, 10, and 11. And you're like, man, it was so quiet, but it's still a triple-double. He impacts the game, 
you know, in different ways. Not the most athletic guy, but his touch is crazy. He can shoot the three, rebound it, and pass like no other. So with him and Jamal Murray, I feel like we're underrated just because, you know, we're not getting the TNT games all the time and things like that. So it's is, hard to see. Is it Jokic's style of play yeah. or is it his whiteness why we don't <laughs> see him as a superstar? Mm. Uh, mm. I think in this day and age, everybody's caught up in the highlights, the above the rim and all that to get people's attention. He's a he's a guy that goes out there and play the game the right way. He's a team guy and everything. So I feel like is when you watching his game, you're not gonna be oh you know it's just simple, it's straight to the point, but it get the job done. You know. It's interesting. I, I need to know his secret sauce. Like you mm -hmm. scouting him because you said he's a big <laughs> yeah. that can shoot the three and pass uh -huh. it. We know that. We see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But there's still something else to his game that obviously helps him translate it to those triple doubles you speak of. Yeah, I mean, I think it's his preparation. Um, he knows, man. He'll tell you, cut this way, man. I'm gonna hit you. You're gonna be wide open, and you and it happens, and he it goes like that. I think mm -hmm. I think his preparation. Before the game, knowing he know every team's defensive scheme is crazy. So I think him preparing early on for the games, it just makes the games that much simpler when he when he get out there and play. Hey, a lot of conversation about player empowerment. Some in the NBA, I think, argue the players have too much power. Yeah. Steve Kerr has criticized Anthony Davis for the move from New Orleans with with time on his contract. Mm -hmm. Says it's bad for the league mm -hmm. that for the players to duck out on their contracts. Your response to Kerr's criticism of AD, bad for the league? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's bad for the league. Um, AD did a great time in New Orleans. He gave that city his heart and soul, man. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have much to say negative about none of that. Um, him going over there to LA, you know, so he's starting a new chapter in his life. You know, um, coming to LA, it's a, good, it's a good area, good team. He want to win right away. Um, I don't think it's bad for the league. I think it'll increase viewers and uh, make us compete and get in the gym a little bit more and work hard because, you know, they loaded over there. So I don't think it's bad for the league at all. Now, being a fan of yours, being a sixth man yeah. on a contender, respect, Jamal Crawford, my dog, yeah. Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, you know, Iggy. Uh, are you satisfied being a sixth man? Because, you know, yeah. it, there are some cons. You kind of cap yourself financially mm -hmm. at times. How, how do you feel about being a sixth man? Um, see, me, I've always been under the radar guy, man. Um, I'm not going to woo you a butter rim or none of that. I know my role. And where every team, like the Denver Nuggets, need me to come off the bench and play my role, I'm going to play that to the best of my ability. Um, right now, I'm happy where I'm at. We're winning. We got a young core. We all want to get better. We work very hard and everything. So I'm fine with my role. And uh, whatever happens, any opportunity that opens up with the Nuggets, um, I'm going to take that head on and try to be the best Monte version I can be. My oh, man. Have you hit up Jamal Murray for any money yet? Not me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you got 170? Hey, 170. No all-stars. I love you. I love you. Go right. see him. Coming up. He's a beast.